Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the Sheep Pen, bah, where no goats are allowed. So today we're going to talk about the correlation between angels and demons and our constitutional rights and what that, how that relates to our spiritual rights. I think many of you would be shocked to know that the U.S. Constitution is based on common law, and common law is based on spiritual law. And uh, I think many of us say or, or repeat what the founders said, that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. I think all of us would agree that our rights come from God. And, but what you may not realize is how that's based on known spiritual law. But before we get started, I would like to thank every one of you who support this channel financially, every one of you who leave me kind words, every one of you who write a letter, every one of you who give me a gift, every one of you who give a thumbs up and share the videos. I couldn't do this without your support. I don't receive money from anybody but my viewers, viewers like you. So if you'd like to support this channel financially, you'll find links in the description below. You know... All of us say we are in a we have inalienable rights. What does inalienable means? It means they can't take those rights away from you because they're a gift from God. You know, this is a free country, right? Have we not said that for many years? This is a free country. We talk about freedom and liberty. We talk about America being the last bastion of freedom. What you may not realize is that freedom is based on the concept of free will, what religious people refer to, what Christians call free will. You see, God put Adam and Eve in a garden. Then he planted a tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and said, don't eat from the tree. Now, in that one act, God gave us the gift of free will. We had the choice to eat from the tree or not eat from the tree. God was very powerful. If he didn't want to give us this gift of free will, he would have planted the tree far away. He would have put a wall between us and the trees, he, or the tree. He would have built a fence between us and the forbidden tree. He would have camouflaged or hidden it from us, but he planted it right there in the garden and gave us a command not to touch it. Nothing to prevent us from touching it. This is the gift of free will. Every one of us lives out that Eden moment every day of our life. Every day of our life, we make a choice because God gave us that choice. What is tyranny? Tyranny is when your God-given rights are being taken away from you, are being infringed, are, uh, you're being oppressed so you can't operate freely in the freedom that God gave you. See, God gave us free will, but when a country or a government or a church or a group of people or a mob decide to supplant God and take away your free speech, your freedom, your free will, your God-given free will, then they're doing something to you that God himself is not doing to you. See, God gave us the gift of free will. And when tyranny steps in and, and tramples your rights, when the mob mentality takes over and tells you what you cannot, can and cannot do, when your freedoms are overran by an organization or a powerful group, we call that tyranny. What is tyranny? Replacing God with yourself. Becoming, trying to be like God. The original Eden lie, honestly, the devil said, uh, you'll be like God. So when people act in a matter, in a manner that is tyrannical, when they trample your God-given rights, they are supplanting God. It's the ultimate slap in the face to God. Trampling your rights isn't just a sin against you. It's a sin against God because God gave us free will and he himself would not force us to do right or wrong, but rather gave us the choice. And this is a choice we're faced with on a daily basis. Now, before you start to think, well, this just anarchy and everybody's free to do whatever, you have to understand that there are limitations on freedom. 
because the limitation is tyranny. So all laws that go back to common law and all common law is based on upholding the sovereign free will of the individual. It's the idea that no man can surplant God's will, that free will is just that. We have freedom. And so, but why do we have laws then? Is it just total anarchy? No, because there's spiritual law. And the spiritual law is the law of love. Secular uh, lawyers would say, your rights end where my nose begins, right? That what happens is when you have a world filled with sovereign spirits who are have been given by God the gift of freedom and choice and free will, well, they might choose to violate the law of love. And in doing so, that would cause them to become tyrannical because in a, to violate the law of love is to violate someone else's rights. Really, the ultimate violation of the law of love is to force you to do something you don't want to do, to trick another person into them to make them do something that they don't want to do, to, to hurt them, to intimidate them, to manipulate them, right? Take advantage of them. I mean, the basic, the basic uh, crimes are uh, still stealing, robbing, you know, raping, embezzlement, fraud. So all laws are based on protecting the sovereign individual from any outside force, whether it be government or church or individual, that would seek to become, do, that would seek to do something God himself wouldn't do, which is rob you of your freedom, rob you of your free will. Now, I talked about why God would do that. I talked about the purpose of free will. I'm not going to cover that in this video. If you're wondering why God gave us free will to begin with, then you should probably look at a recent video I did. Uh, I believe it was called uh, Why We Were Created or The Reason we were, we were Created. It's a couple months old. Go back and look at that video if you want to understand what motivated God potentially to give us free will. But none can doubt that God gave us free will. And any act that, in, that infringes, infringes, rather, or steps across the line of my free will, when you impose your free will to steal someone else's free will, to change somebody else's course of their life, to affect them negatively, then you are acting like a tyrant, Right? So the whole concept of freedom is based on the concept that God gave us the right to choose right from wrong, the, the tree of good and evil, that we all have to make those decisions. But there is a spiritual law, the law of love, that protects each person's sovereign, sovereignty. Unfortunately, in this America that we currently live in, some probably well-meaning but misinformed, brainwashing uh, uh, trainers of police have taught them that if you stand up for your civil rights, if you stand up for your legal rights when you're interacting, interacting with a police officer, then you're a sovereign citizen. And they've made that a four-letter or dirty word. But I'm here to tell you, the whole concept of the Constitution, the true root of uh, of our purpose for living is all based in the concept of freedom of choice or liberty, we call it, or free will is what theologians might call it. But yet they perverted that. And, and, and you know why? It's a symptom of tyranny. In a society where tyranny has taken over, where the government has decided they will supplant God, right? They will, they will usurp God. They will be like God to you and make you a subject. Then anyone who talks about free will, the right to choose, anyone who talks about their rights, especially if you talk about your God-given rights as a sovereign soul, then you must be a terrorist, a sovereign citizen, an enemy of the state. It's true. 
the, anyone who believes in freedom is, rightfully so, the enemy of a tyrannical state because the two things are incompatible. So a lot of you live in this country with rights like the Fourth Amendment, but you may not understand how those rights work. And this channel is also about teaching you about your spiritual rights, your spiritual authority, and the battle between good and evil. So I want to talk about how angels and demons fit into the concept of free will and sovereignty and the struggle between good and evil and this war that we find ourselves in, the struggle between spiritual freedom and tyranny, between the law of love and those who would supplant your God-given rights so that they can impose their will upon you. You know, Jesus taught us how to pray. He said, um, you know, the, the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer is this statement, um, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God gave us spiritual rights. And when you supplant God's plan, right? When you try to go against God's plan of free will and become a tyrant, bent on control, bent on manipulation, intimidation, persecution, whether you do that on an individual basis or a collective basis uh, in the form of a government or a church or any entity, a union, <laughs> that you are literally trying to be like God and you're doing something God wouldn't do because he gave us the right to choose. Now, don't be confused. This life is a test and you will be held accountable on the day of judgment when Christ himself, who walked in the flesh himself, will judge the acts of your life. And the rule book he uses will be the law of love. Did you acknowledge, did you protect other people's rights? Did you uphold their freedoms? Did you try to impose your will on other people through treachery, manipulation? Did you violate the law of love? So let's get on now to how that relates to spiritual warfare. You have to know your rights before you can utilize um, self-defense, okay? Whether, you know, you got to know your rights or you can be, your rights can be abused if you don't know them, correct? Same in the spirit realm. If you don't know your rights, your authority, what the devil can and cannot do to you, if you don't know what God will and won't do for you, if you don't know where the lines are drawn, if you don't understand constitutional uh, law and the Constitution of the United States, you'll probably have your rights trampled left and right and you'll never be able to defend yourself. You'll just be a vassal of whatever authoritarian state wants to have control over you. That the knowledge of the Constitution is how you uphold your constitutional rights. And the knowledge of your spiritual constitutional rights is how you defend yourself and protect your rights in the spirit realm as well. Let's look at the Fourth Amendment. What is the Fourth Amendment? It is to be secure in your papers and in your property, right? In your possessions. This is what protects your house and makes your house your sovereign castle. The, the, the police can't just come into your house and take control. They have to have, they have to abide by certain rules because you have this inalienable God-given right to be free of outside inter, 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 uh, interference and to be um, the master of your own castle, Right? the king of your own castle. You have this sovereignty written into the Constitution and it's mirrored, the Constitution mirrors spiritual law. So what is your house and your possessions in the spirit realm? It's your body. It's your mind, your body, your spirit. It's your triune being. Oftentimes in dreams and in dream interpretation, houses represent you. So, in this analogy, you have sovereign property rights to yourself. 
God has limited himself through the act of free will. He will not interfere or invade you. God will not kick your door down, right? And the devil, likewise, um, is not supposed to, right? So where does spiritual law kick in? Angels are spiritual law enforcers. Angels are spiritual cops, okay? So let's look at this in a couple of, in an earthly instance and in a spiritual instance. So in an earthly instance, if somebody knocks on your literal door of your house and you open the door to them willingly and then they begin to convince you of something, you find it interesting, so you invite them into your house. Now they are in your house and it's because it was your free will that brought them in. You had the free will to close the door and say no, but instead you invited them in. Now they might sit on your couch or even go into the most intimate parts of your bedroom and convince you that they need your television more than you do. And then you willingly give your television to this person and they leave and take it with you. Now, one way to look at it is you've been robbed but you can't cry foul. You can't call the police because you invited him in, because he convinced you, because you gave it to him willingly, patted him on the back, because you gave him something to drink while he was there. So the police aren't going to do anything about that. They're going to pat you on your head and go, well, I guess you're out one TV, aren't you? Maybe you'll learn from that lesson. And this is very true of the angelic as well. If you invite the devil in, if you entertain the demonic words, if you listen to their sob story, if you buy in to their uh, what is it uh, machinations, if you buy into their manipulation, if you let them convince you that they need your spirit more than you do, then you will just give your sovereignty away to them and pat them on the back as they leave with a chunk of your soul. Now, let's look at another scenario. Same bad guy, but he's tired of all of the uh, technical details of how to get in your house and get your TV. And he just waits till you're asleep. He just waits till you're gone. He knocks the window out, comes in, and steals your television. Now you can call the police. Now you've been genuinely defrauded. Your rights have been violated. Your Fourth Amendment right to be free from harassment and unlawful search and seizure inside of your house has been violated. And now you can call the police and they can go out and find this criminal and go on the attack. Why? Because he violated your free will. You didn't invite him in. You didn't give him your television. He broke in and stole it. In the spirit world, this is called a trespassing demon. Most people fall prey to the first kind of criminal. And the, the Lord isn't going to bail you out or protect you from that as long as you're opening your door and letting the devil in. As long as you're entertaining demons, you can't expect for angels to come to your rescue. But the minute they break the spiritual law, the minute they violate your spiritual sovereignty, and they will, they'll do it by hook or by crook, or if they have to, they'll just break in. Then you can call on angels. So when do the police show up to protect you? When you, a righteous homeowner, property owner, renter, call them and say, they've broken in. They're trying to break in. Someone broke in then you can call the police, right? And they will come. If you call the police and go, hey, this guy came over, he was sweet talking to me and I gave him 500 bucks and I feel stupid. They're going to go, well, stinks to be you. <laughs> Sorry, did you learn something? This is true in the spirit realm as well. You can't accept, expect angels to deliver you from demonic attack if you're the one inviting them in and giving them and giving up to them, giving it up to them. So when are angels limited? Angels, like police officers, can't come unless you call them. 
you might be being home invaded. But if you don't call upon the police, how are they going to help you? You know why? Because their Fourth Amendment restrictions is on the police as well. Your sovereignty restrictions is on the angelic as well. They will only come to your defense if you call 911. You have to call spiritual 911. Otherwise... They'll sit out there and not do a thing because nobody called them. If you're sitting around waiting for angels to come to your defense and you have not called the spiritual 911, if you've not picked up the red telephone and made a call into God and went, Lord, deliver me from this evil. Lord, help me. The angels aren't coming. Now, sometimes... Cops can intervene and enter a house violating your Fourth Amendment when you didn't call them. If some neighbor called them and said, I heard her screaming. It's, I heard a gunshot come from inside that house. This is what police call exigent circumstances. This is the only time they can come into your house without your permission when you didn't call them and you didn't ask them to come in. They'll come in anyway if they believe there's a crime going on inside and it's been brought to their attention or they discovered it some way. So do angels, guardian angels, ever intervene when you don't call them? Yeah, when there's exigent circumstances, right? This is why it's so important to pray for your family and friends, to pray for your neighbors, to pray for your community, because you can call in the police, even if the person who's getting eaten alive by devils isn't calling out to God. You can call out on their behalf. And when the angelic, when God sends the, the, the cavalry as an answer to your call, and they see the carnage, they can't intervene because you brought it to their attention. Exigent circumstances. You can't just say, hey, I think something bad's going on over there. I don't know what it is. But when you say, I heard screaming, they're going to kick the door in. It's They have a right to step across your Fourth Amendment rights because some spiritual or some, in, in the literal world, some heinous crime is being committed against you. In the spiritual world, some heinous crime is being committed against you. But typically, you have to call out to God or someone has to call out for, to God on your behalf. Now, how do you keep spiritual invaders out of your spiritual home? It's just like how you keep invaders out of your earthly home. Security. You put up lights so you can see what's going on around your home. In the spirit realm, you're, you become spiritually aware of what's going on around you. Right? If there's a pack of demons lining up, stalking you, you're aware of it. If you have a home and you put up lights and cameras, it makes you aware of the coming threat. Because you're shining a light on it, it's a deterrent. Because you're watching, they're less likely to make a move on you. And then you've got locks on your doors and your windows. And many of us in America will keep a gun in the home as well. In the spirit realm, that understanding of your rights and exercising your rights in the spirit, spirit realm, that sword of the spirit, which is knowing, the, knowing your rights, knowing the spiritual constitution, which is found in the Bible, and, and being able to defend yourself spiritually, having a phone to be able to call in angelic reinforcements to bring spiritual law to rule against these individuals who are seeking to tyrannize you these spiritual entities we call demons. You see how God's will on earth as it is in heaven, you can see how the, the, the spirit realm reflects the physical, the physical realm reflects the spirit realm. I got it the other way around. The, the physical world impersonates the spiritual world. It, it copies it. So you see, the devil breaks the rules. It's why he's an outlaw. All his demons are outlaws. They'll come in any open door or any open window 
If you're not vigilant and aware, if you don't have spiritual lights and cameras on the outside of your house, if you don't spiritually have a fence around yourself and spiritual dogs running loose, if you don't have that, that understanding of God's word and arm yourself with the, spirit, with the sword of the spirit, if you have an open door or an open window, if you walk away and leave your house open, you'll come back and it'll be overrun by demons. Your spiritual house. Just like if you left your doors unlocked and left for a week and came back, somebody else would be living in your home. So, so you have to have spiritual self-defense. You have to have a hotline phone to the angelic police. Right? You have to live by the law of love because I'll tell you another thing. Criminals don't typically call the police. They deal with problems themselves. You know why? They really can't call the police. Because if they call the police to investigate something that was done against them, then their own crimes will be seen. Then they will become victims or subjected to spiritual law for their violations of their own. So if you want to be able to pick up that angelic phone and get an answer on the, on the heavenly 911, if you want angels to be dispatched to your situation to drive the enemy from your midst, if you want to be defended by God, then you better not have secrets in your basement. So being righteous in the eyes of God, keeping the law of love, respecting other people's rights, not being a tyrant, not being a manipulator, not being a thief, not being a, 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 a bad guy, but being on the right side gives you quick and instant access to heavenly reinforcements. But you also have to keep your spiritual house on lockdown. So, what are spiritual doors and windows that demons use to access us? What are the holes in our defenses that allow criminal demons to invade our homes and cause our lives to be engulfed in wreck and ruin? Well, we talk about the number one is don't be also a criminal. You know, drug dealers steal from drug dealers more than they steal from law-abiding citizens. Right? Criminals rip each other off primarily. <laughs> and... So and they don't call the police, right? So so much crime is not even is not even recorded because both sides are bad. But breaking the law of love, not being a good person will open a window. Messing around with things you know you shouldn't be messing around with. Kicking rocks over the edge of God's will, right? Toying with God can open up windows and doors that allow demons to come into your house whether you want them there or not. Messing with a Ouija board will open up the door, the spiritual door. Engaging in something that you know is a violation of the law of love over and over and over again is like leaving your front door wide open and going to town, going on vacation. When you come back, all your stuff will be gone. You'll be pillaged. You will be overrun by criminal forces. Your home, your spirit home, your body will be overrun by demons. You know, in this world where our constitutional God-given rights are being trampled, it makes it even harder for us to understand our own rights. You know, someone talked to me today in the comment section of one of my videos where I talk about this dire future that they have planned for us. This takedown of America, uh, this world war, potentially destruction of the world as we know it. And he asked us, how is it that God can let that happen? And if he does let it happen, won't all the survivors feel like, where were you God when we needed you? And I told him, I, I said in that, I think I said this, but if not, here's my answer, that we're responsible. See, you have the idea that God is in control. God's not in control. You have sovereign free will. We are the stewards of this planet. If this planet goes to hell in a handbasket, it's because we collectively broke the rules. 
We collectively violated each other's sovereign God-given rights. We collectively acted as outlaws. We collectively did not uh, uh, respect property rights. We collectively took advantage of one another. And let's say all this bad stuff does happen and you have this remnant that survives to the end. I don't think they'll be bitter at all, but grateful that somehow they came through it alive. See, it's not up to God to protect your spiritual house. It's up to you. Through the way you live, through the way you act, through the things you do, you create locks on doors and windows. You create chain link fences around your spirit. You put up lights and cameras and guard dogs and you have a direct line to the, to the backup, to the angelic backup and you call them whenever you need them. If you live like that, spiritually, if you got angels on speed dial, if you live the law of love to a T, if you have no hesitation to call out to God, God rescue me from these invading demons who are trying to destroy my life. And have faith to know they will come to your defense. That even if all of this horrible stuff happens to the rest of the world, it won't happen to you. Because you stand on your sovereign rights. You defend your sovereign God-given rights in the spirit realm. You don't give the devil a stick to beat you with. You keep a solid castle and you got angels on speed dial and God on your side. And you will come through whatever this world throws at you as a victor, not a victim. I hope this message helped you to understand spiritual law. I hope you understand your own constitutional rights a little bit more. And know this, the devil is like a criminal and he will violate your rights if you let him. See, God put us in control when he gave us free will. And we also have the free will to submit to God and put him back on the throne and make Christ king in this world, in our hearts, in our spiritual lives and in our earthly lives. I ask you to, to uh, support this channel financially. The links are in the description. And I'll leave you with this powerful prayer. God, surround us in your ring of fire and hedge of thorns of protection. Lord, set up an angelic patrol around our spiritual house, O oh Lord. Lord, protect us from every enemy that would seek to destroy us and violate our rights and destroy our sovereignty, Lord. Lord, we submit all we are to you. We submit to the rule of the law of love. We stand on the, righteous, the righteousness of love. And Lord, we know that no matter what this world throws at us, that if we live this way, we'll come out on the other side because if God is for us, who can be against us? He will make a safe place for us. And this will, he'll make Lord, we know that you will make for us a banquet in the midst of our enemies. And no matter how chaotic it looks around us, you will nestle us in your loving arms and under your wing, safe under the rock, the rock of our salvation. Lord, we know you have our back and Lord, we pray for your protection and your guidance and your peace in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time on The Sheep Pen.